Everybody, hey, we're going to be looking at how to go from good to godly, and I think the best way to do that right now is to follow certain YouTubers that are, A, enjoying the game and pushing its limits. And so I have five of my top favorite guys, and I look for a few things. I want them to be great at the game. I want them to be enjoyable and realistic about it, like authentic. They're not just trying to, like, say how horrible the game is or if they change everything, it would be great, but really having good suggestions for the community as a whole and what makes it enjoyable, how to actually have quality of life increases, uh, and overall just see some awesome gameplay. Play, and these guys do it time and time again. So we're going to get at it and we're going to check them out one at a time. I'm going to do this in a special way to make it very easy for you. And that is, I'm going to give you some key thing that I go to them for, like something I know they consistently deliver on and a big takeaway that I've gotten from them that you can have right now. So there's actually some benefit just right now in watching this, but I, I just ask you to watch through all five, really check them out and find which ones are right for you, because that's what matters at the end of the day. Who of these guys is someone that's a fit for you and what you like enjoy watching while you're playing through an amazing game like Diablo 4. So let's get at it. Okay, so for the first person on this list, this is someone I've been following for a while. Uh, he is a great build guide person for Borderlands. I've been following him for years. Uh, absolutely incredible. I love the excitement and energy he brings to it. The thing that I go to him consistently for is that he is absolutely incredible at building guides, but what he does is special, I think, from just like, here's the guide and here's all the pieces. Uh, he actually breaks it down and rates how hard it is to get all the material for it. Uh, what it's good at, is it good at bossing? Is it good at just mobs? Is it good at speed running? What is it good at? And he gives you those rankings right in the front so you can kind of, you get a feel for the build if this is the kind of gameplay you want. If you're right now playing a build and you're like, taken forever to kill the bosses, it's really nice to know up front that you take the time to build this, hey, how hard it is, and B, is it right for that? So what is he doing right now that is probably my biggest takeaway, and as he's consistently staying on top of where are we getting the most XP? In the end game, when you're kind of grinding to the last level 100, it being even a little bit efficient in it or knowing where to go can make all the difference, and he tests this as groups, as solo, and he kind of tracks all of it and tells you the best information that's going on right now, so definitely check that out. Okay, so that brings us to number two, and number two is Rax. And one of the top things I appreciate Rax, not only is he commonly one of the top players consistently was in Diablo 3 and is just crushing Diablo 4, he plays a lot of Diablo. And he has played, I think at this point, he's I think he's one more character to get to level uh, 100 out of all the characters. So he's played a ton of hours to do that. That is not an easy feat at all. And so his insights on the game are making it actually an enjoyable thing to play, where there's a feel like this is kind of taking, like, taking the fun out of it or making it less enjoyable because it just becomes such a grind that it's no longer fun. Or uh, he has so many insights, and I think he has a lot of good track to the actual development team because he's been doing this for so long that his stuff, as he... As he keeps pushing it out, it does get listened to. Number one thing I'm getting, I've gotten from Rax, and it's something I actually got from Diablo 3, but it definitely carries into Diablo 4, is one easy concept. If you want to build your character fast, if you sometimes momentum is the thing that makes it most fun. The fact that you're moving through, that you feel like you're getting to that next level is the most enjoyable thing. And so he he always said that the top gamers, and I don't, he doesn't take credit for it himself, but he said it a lot. And so it's stuck in my head, and is the town is lava. The more time you are spending in the town, the less time you're spending leveling the less time you're spending going and getting those drops. And so it can start, to, if you're doing a lot of sorting through each of your items and spending just hours uh, making sure that you have the perfect thing, getting everything you're, he, there is just a lot of the, it slows down to a point where it's no longer fun. And so staying on top of it, making sure you're paying attention. Hey, I've been here for a while. Maybe I got to wrap this up and then get back at it. If you're enjoying it, great, go for it. But I know that, that gives up a lot of that feeling of momentum and forward movement and Rax has definitely helped people stay on that track. So if you want to check out Rax, just check out his stuff. You can, again, it's, everything's going to be in the description. You don't have to worry about it right now. Uh, it'll all be down there. So that takes us to number three, and that is Woody Joe. So Woody Joe alongside Rax are actually contributors for Maxroll, which is one of the best sites I know for finding great builds. They do a lot of just great stuff of really ranking the site or, or all the builds so you know like which ones, how they stand up in different F, like things that you do in Endgame. So whether they're good at Nightmare Dungeons or they're good at speed running, whatever they are, uh, the two of them have contributed an amazing amount to the site. And Woody Joe created some of the most incredible builds. He's constantly mid-maxing them. He's pushing them in hardcore. Uh, he is one of the top, world top players in Diablo uh, 3 time and time again. And so just an absolutely incredible Incredible person to watch. Um, my favorite thing for Diablo 4, the biggest thing I've gotten from him, is his uh, Death Trap Twisting Blades build for the Rogue. It is incredible. It is probably one of the most enjoyable builds I have done. It is pretty solid. Like it, it, you get to where it's very usable very fast in the early game. You don't have to wait. Some of these pieces, like 
or some of these builds, you can't even get to, to the piece you need to make it really happen until like end game and even late end game in many cases. Uh, this was a build that because of his guides for his leveling guide and for his end game guide, I was able just to play through, enjoy it and kept just getting more and more powerful and just blitzing through the game. It is a fast mobile thing, but that's, I love the, the build that he did there. He definitely pushed it a lot and you get to see a lot of his hardcore play, but he's always pushing the rogue to some other level, but his guides are incredible. So make sure you guys check that out. Cool, we are moving right along. We are on number four, and number four is Riker. If you guys have been playing Diablo at all, you probably know who he is, but he has great coverage on what's happening in the industry, not just in-game stuff, but what's actually happening, what's coming down the line. Uh, one of the, my favorite takeaways from him consistently is that he has a look into what is actually happening in the updates, what's coming in the, happening in the community itself. You know, some of the stuff I'm like, I, I usually enjoy playing. I don't like to go and like get into all the Reddit feeds and everything to go find out exactly what, what everybody's upset about right this moment. Riker gives me that quick brief real fast so I can get back at it and play the game, yet still know what's going on in the community, which I really enjoy. And so one thing to note is he has an incredible baritone voice. Uh, just makes it very enjoyable to listen to. So uh, definitely check out Riker and get updated on what's actually happening in the industry as a whole. For number five, we have DM. And DM is one of my personal favorites just because he is so down to earth, relatable, just authentic. Uh, I really enjoy what he's doing because I think he bridges that gap. A lot of these guys on this list are guys that blow past to the end very fast. Um, I think DM takes his time and really enjoys the game. He lays somewhere between like normal, the average casual player and like some of the top leaderboard guys that are eventually going to be crushing it in Diablo four every season. Um, and he gives this really good take. So like kind of what's happening in that mid range between like you get into it, you just get into end game and start feeling it. Uh, he has great coverage on it. And really the, the greatest thing I think I get from him consistently time and time again, I just feel like when I'm watching his videos or catching his live streams, I just feel like I'm hanging out with a buddy that's enjoying the game with me, not someone that's trying to report or get ahead of like everything I'm doing as fast as possible, even though he, he is a little a step or two ahead uh, in for most the average casual player. But it's just it's really nice. It's like he is very open and authentic and he tells you when he's not enjoying something or when he sucks at something he's just admitting it and i really appreciate it because it is it feels like i'm just shooting the shit with one of my friends um but a great person to watch a good coverage if you got one of the guys that are like uh, some of the most extreme and you're getting their crazy ass builds and seeing how far they're pushing it like moxie or rax or woody joe uh and you want kind of a break from that and just get another person that's just enjoying and playing alongside kind of feeling where you're at then dm is your guy and so that is our five before we go i did promise one more um this is a person that I think has been actually adding a lot to the community, uh, not because he doesn't just give it like what's good. He's obviously not just, I love Diablo four and I'll say anything great about it, but he's very big about the community being protected. And that means if the developers aren't doing things he thinks they should be doing or things that would make the quality of the game a lot better. And I just really appreciate it because he gives it both. It's like, yeah, he's frustrated about some things and he's very honest and direct about it. Uh, then he's also very reasonable about what does it take? Like it's early in the development cycle and what does it take the developers to get there? But I think between those two points and his influence in the space, he's actually doing a lot for the industry as a whole to make sure this game is actually something that's stable and continue to be played. And that is is Asmund Gold. Uh, Asmund Gold is obviously a legend in World of Warcraft and time and time again in his live streams. Um, but this is another person that I really enjoy when he has takes on it or reacts to people's Diablo 4 videos. I'm there watching. I really enjoy his take. And I think he actually contributes a lot to making sure this game stays alive and enjoyable uh, and that we get to see it year after year rather than the doom and gloom that everybody's saying, oh, well, it's not like this other game. It's not like PoE, <laughs> you know, like. And so I just really appreciate what he's doing for the community as a whole and allowing us to actually, the, you know, the more attention that's brought to this game and the more, um, tweaks that people who are really playing and have actually put time into it and actually are hearing other people in the community talk about it are adding to the conversation with Blizzard, I think the better the game will get, the faster it'll get that way. So if you enjoyed this, I definitely want you to check out my video on what to do before you start your next alt, because it is so important that there's stuff you can do with your main. Even if you started an alt already, if you have your second character, you tried it, you're trying a different class, there's still things you can go back and do with your main that really sets you up to have the most, the fastest like startup in a new alt and make sure you have the most coverage, uh, just really great things. And a big mistake that I made that I really regret, I go through all of that to make sure you guys don't do the same thing and can actually enjoy setting up your alt and getting the maximum out of it just by thinking through a few things beforehand.